hello people. I'm doing an interesting machine, machining operation here. Uh, it's quite loud now, but I think I will finish this and then I will talk to you about what I'm doing. Okay, uh, the shot is now finished for now. Um, as you can see, it's a very long shaft. It's a 1.2 meter, or um, uh, let's say it's about 4 feet long, and uh, the thickness is 55 millimeters, or just a little bit over 2 inch. So, um, I want this shaft to be running through and to be uh, as accurate and consistent on the diameter as possible. And that's uh, what I just gave my best shot. So, um, I am using the following rest uh, bolted on the carriage. I have never used a following rest before, and let me tell you, this took a long time to figure out how, it's, how it should be done. But I'm pretty happy with the results. So, first let's do some measurements and see if this actually is any accurate. I know it's not dead not accurate, but for a shaft this long and this uh, narrow, I think I should be pretty happy with this. So the runout in the middle is exactly five hundredths of a millimeter, which is exactly two thousandths of an inch. And it's the worst in the middle and gets better closer to the uh, ends. And now let's check the, the diameter of the, of the shaft. Let's see if I can give you a good view. Okay, this should be good enough. So, using this 50 to 75 millimeter mic, that is pretty clean. Let's see what kind of readings we get. Let me clean the mic first. Okay, good. Let's check here first. We get. 20 and a half. And let's go to about one quarter. Twenty and a half. Or a tad over. Let's go to the middle part, or a little bit over. Twenty and a half. And now, two final measures, right here. Nineteen and a half, and right at the top jaws. Twenty and a half. So this is pretty, pretty good result, I think. So this whole shaft. The diameter of this whole shaft is within one hundredth of a millimeter. How awesome is that? Really, really happy with this result. Actually, uh, I was supposed to use my tool post grinder on this next, 
but it's so accurate that I don't think I even have to do that. Um, so uh, this shaft will be um, the main pin for the tipper of my uh, truck. Um, and the material is um, uh, 42 CRMO4, uh, which is, I think it's uh, in American standards is 41, 42 steel. So it's pretty, pretty tough stuff. Um, I think I even should get this heat reader, but uh, for the use that I have for the truck, this, this is easily gonna last the lifetime of the truck. And I'm gonna have some bronze bearings sliding on this. So I think, let me share you a few tips what I learned. So what's the most important thing is to keep the runout and all the other errors as low as possible even from the start. Um, I think there are two ways to use, um, to use the following rest. And um, it is to either have it uh, after the tool or before the tool. And in this uh, case, because when I was, uh, um, I was uh, turning a rough shaft with, with a rough outside surface, uh, I just have to have and uh, the, the rest on the rear of the tool, on the back of the tool, I mean. And actually I'm not quite sure in which cases it's even possible to have it in front of the tool. Maybe if you're absolutely sure that the shaft is running through and is good in diameter. Um, so I'm running it behind the tool. And how I start this? Um, um, I actually only use the live, uh, live center support first to turn the first 10 centimeters or uh, 4 inches. And then um, I set the following rest to start here. And then just um, walking, walking my way all the way to the chuck. And uh, what I found really um, handy was to have a dial indicator riding behind uh, the following rest and monitoring the the runout and the vibrations of the of the shaft and i found out that when you are within one hundredth of a millimeter of runout it's fine but if it goes over that you have to stop and return to the uh, to the start and start again because when you get over that 100 hundreds of a millimeter of runout, uh, it will not correct itself. It will just get worse. And the worse it gets, uh, uh, the faster it starts getting worse. So the worst thing, worst possible thing to do is to keep on going, even though you get sadder. I did that mistake and that's why I had to remove so much material. Well, it's not very much, it's maybe one millimeter, but I could have done with just a quarter of that, if I knew what I was doing in the beginning. But um, yeah, so 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 when you get sadder, just uh, reset, return here and cut a new straight through running uh, uh, part here, and set the rest here. And then start again from zero run out. And to keep chatter down, um, I found out that uh, altering the revolutions of the late spindle between passes helps a lot. If you run the, uh, the whole, um, uh, whole operation with the same RPM, um, you always hit the same harmonics. But when you change the speed um, and also the feed, um, it, uh, it doesn't fit the same peaks and valleys and that really seems to help with vibration. And another thing is uh, to try to dampen the vibrations on the shaft. Uh, whole time I had this uh, piece of cloth uh, on the shaft and I was holding it pretty tight with my hand. So that also used to help a lot. And 
um, one problem is uh, keeping these tips lubricated well uh, because this, uh, um, like the steady rest, the following rest is moving uh, all the time. So unlike the steady rest, the following rest is moving all the time. So you have to make sure that the tips are well lubricated. Uh, because when you oil here, uh, after a few inches, you will get no more. You will have no more oil in here, so you have to re-oil it. Um, and I found out that it was it was better to have a little bit a little bit um, preload on the on the rests. Um, no play, uh, I mean, even a little play was too much, so they have to be tight. Um, and what else? Um, and of course, running pretty low on RPM and high on feed seem, seem to work pretty good. And what else I learned? I think that's pretty much it. So, so main thing in the main thing in doing this is to keep chatter down and the runout down. And the main tips, as I said, is to alter the the speed on the spindle and the feed rate, and uh, try to dampen the vibrations by by uh, holding something on the shaft, but not pressing it, of course, and. Monitoring the um, the runout and the chatter was very important also. So, and as I showed you, showed you, I have a little bit of runout on the shaft, uh, but I think I could have gotten that to pretty close to zero, even with maybe the next pass. Um, but I'm not going to bother doing that because 500 is just fine for me. Uh, but uh, so, so the more times you go over, the better results you should get if the starting point is accurate. But uh, if there is chatter from the tool or, uh, or a rough surface finish, also you have to have a fresh insert edge because everything that the tool is cutting is followed and amplified by these, these uh, rests. So everything has to be perfect. And I think I will have to say that this is one of, or maybe the trickiest thing that I have ever done on a lathe. And if the shaft was any longer than this, uh, I don't know what the result would have been. Actually, I wouldn't be too surprised if it had worked even for a much longer shaft, but it takes more time and more patience and, and I think it even amplifies the, the vibration issues. So, just a quick tip. And again, this is not the way to do this, this is my way to do it and I just learned it. Uh, first of all, I had no idea how to do it, and uh, I was getting terrible results. Uh, and then I just tried a few things and figured it out, and found a way that works for me on this machine. So, if you have to do something like this, maybe you can use my tips. And uh, what I get to do next is I have this shaft, which is smaller in diameter, this is only 35 millimeters or about one and a half inch. And this is going to be a line boring shaft. Uh, it's, it's, it's made of the same material, 42 uh, CRMO4 or 4142. And I am going to tool post grind that because I want it to be very accurate and running through. Um, it's only about uh, one tenth of a millimeter or a little bit less um, over the nominal size. So uh, I'm not going to turn this first. I will just tool post grind it. And as I told you, maybe the idea 
on this shaft was to um, rough it first by turning and then tool post grind it. But since the result is so great, I'm not gonna bother grinding it, I think. So what I got left to do is to turn uh, out this, uh, this piece right here because my carriage uh, was touching the tailstock. I should have the, the quill a little bit longer out. So I have to clean this and then flip the shaft and uh, do uh, the same, th same thing on this end and also uh, do a center hole and N16 threads on the end. Okay, so another pretty nice project. Not much walking here, but I think you might find the tips useful. And once again, not the way, but my way. I don't want to teach you anything, I just want to give you ideas and inspiration. So, again, thanks for watching and until the next video, which probably will be the tool post grinding video, if you want to see it. Do you want to see it? Bye. Okay, one thing that I forgot to say, by the way, I just finished this end. Um, I still have to transfer it though. So one thing I still remembered uh, is uh, also maybe the reason that the uh, shaft turned out so, yeah, so uniform in diameter is that um, when you have a tiny amount of preload on this uh, rest here, uh, the distance between this rest and the tip of the tool stays the same all the way through the shaft. So it even helps with the misalignment of the tailstock. But um, there may be some problems. For example, um, if the tailstock alignment is off to too far back, uh, what may happen is that um, um, when you start here and have this tight, it will loosen up when you get closer to the chuck or the headstock and that will cause issues. So it is also very crucial to have the tailstock alignment right. Uh, and also what happens if it's, uh, if it's uh, too much close to you, um, it rubs more and more coming here, uh, which may also cause some issues. Not quite sure uh, what will let loose, but it's not, not good either. Uh, so I think in this case, uh, the alignment on my tailstock is pretty good and I have tried to keep it very good. Um, and this might be a good place to try uh, making a little bit uh, of a relief in here and then doing the same thing here and um, uh, I mean with the same cross light setting and see what the tailstock alignment really is. But um, by the results of, the, of this turning action I think the alignment is spot on which is great. So, again, have everything right when you do this. Uh, errors will just magnify themselves. So, 